first-term Republican congressman named Robert Pittenger was addressing a small crowd of constituents when one of them accused him of not doing enough to secure our borders. Interesting. Of course, Representative Pittenger fought back against those allegations by pointing out how, to the small crowd, of how he voted for a very good bill, quote-unquote, that would deport all child migrants and dreamers. Yeah, sounds like a very good bill, huh? Now, Think Progress caught up with this representative and asked him if he'd continue to support the deportations in light of some of the recent reports that we've covered here on DYT Community of that some of those children that were deported back to their homes were murdered soon after. He, of course, said, Continue the deportations. Continue sending them back home post-haste. Go, send them back. He also said, quote, it's the most egregious, awful crime and a pity. What has happened to these young children? But do you want to open up America's doors to the entire world? We can't handle the health care and education today for our own population. We have to be sensible about, about what we, our system, can manage. So you put them on planes and you send them back. Now, while it may sound reasonable and logical to you, it actually really isn't. Because he runs in the fallacy that our policy proposals are throwing open the doors to anyone and everyone who wants to come in. That's not what we're doing. That's actually not the aim of comprehensive immigration reform, especially the kind that the Democrats have been trying to pass recently. Now, his arguments insist on continuing this ridiculous uh, argument that liberals want immigration to be essentially a free-for-all and that we should uh, which shouldn't allow fleeing uh, people fleeing from rampant poverty and violence to even have a chance to come here and make their case about why they should be able to stay now I want to go to the panel I want to ask you guys about this what do you think well I can understand why people who aren't necessarily well educated on this particular issue would think Oh, we can't have people. I understand that they're worried about our education system. Our schools won't be able to hunt, handle kind of hundreds of thousands of extra children. Our healthcare system won't be able to handle hundreds of thousands of extra people. I understand those concerns, saying, "Oh, we can't afford it." But the thing is, you know, there's been numerous studies. I know that kind of Jenk talked about it in the post game yesterday. That you know, immigrants, you know, whether illegal or legal, they contribute a hell of a lot to the economy overall. Yes, there may be individuals who, if you did a case study of them, they may take away negatively from the economy in terms of resources, but the vast majority will end up adding to America's economic strength. And the problem with these Republicans, um, like this guy in this story, is that they see immigration, and as they see many other issues, as just a simple black and white issue, and black and white may be the best term, but it's either kind of completely full open, anyone can come in, that's it, or we just shut the border down completely. We build a giant kind of iron fence there, um, and no one's allowed to come in. And things that's what any rational person is eye for. You have, again, as you said, reasonable immigration reform. You know, look at Australia, and okay, I know Australia's an island, so it's a bit more easier for them to control their immigration, same with the UK, but you have kind of a points-based system you know, and you let people in that way, but there's, there are a hundred different ways that you can sort out the immigration problem that you could probably have most Republicans would be quite happy with, but they just don't even want to hear the arguments. And the problem is, all of the people who think represent them in Congress, they're kind of Republican representatives, their Republican representatives aren't putting up, you know, any decent proposals apart from, no, shut the border, we'll send the kids back, don't care if they're going to die. And of course, you know, the final point as well is that this guy probably says, I'm a true Christian. It's like, you're sending kids back to their homes where they're probably going to die. And, you know, America's founding on, you know, give me your sick, give me your weak. Um, he just, he doesn't care about these kids' lives, and that's also a real shame as well. It's definitely from the playbook of superficial solutions that we really don't want to fix. Um, he's definitely overlooking the fact that there's a reason why these kids are leaving their areas and there's a reason why their areas are so violent and we are probably the number one facilitator of the situation that they're in so whether he likes it or not we Americans have a responsibility to these children because our drug policies help facilitate these drug lords to have such a strong stronghold to ruin the lives of these children and displace them out of their homes and making them leave to the safest place that they know, which is America. And 
it's I wouldn't go as far as saying that he's a Christian because <laughs> obviously he's not reading the same scripture that a lot of Christians that I know have read because no one would look at the face of a child or hearing the news of the deaths of children and be like, oh, well, fuck it, you know. Kids die all day, you know, just as long as they're brown, I'm okay with it. Like, nobody in the right mind would do that. But this person wants to rile up his base. He wants to show the crotchety old Minutemen that are on the border that he's tough and that even in the face of children, he's still going to attack the immigrant and get rid of the immigrant as if they don't do anything that helps this country. You have millions of people coming into this border, working in our job system, putting their wages, getting cut into Social Security that they're probably never going to be able to take back if they don't have comprehensive immigration reform. So thank you, immigrants, for at least keeping our Social Security somewhat solvent by putting in and not taking out. I mean, everything is more nuanced than what these conservatives would like to lead on. And everything is a little bit more complicated than what they would like to lead on. To address what the what the guy actually said here, um, you know, but uh, but do you want to open up America's doors to the entire world? Uh, we can't handle the health care and education today for our own population. You know what? He's right. We can't. A lot of that has to do because he's with him, you know, being part of the party uh, that's working to ensure that we don't have decent education and health care in America. Uh, you know, to privatize uh, our education and to uh, to keep us from getting the uh, single payer uh, health care that the rest of the developed world enjoys that is cheaper and more effective than what we have in America. Uh, so yeah, he's got a point. He's absolutely right. Of course, he's the reason why he's right. And it's again just your typical conservative, self-fulfilling prophecy uh, uh, and philosophy of government. Um, and then. Uh, where he's not right is where he says, do you want to open up the America's doors to the entire world? At least I don't, I should say that. Maybe there are some, some libs out there who hold that uh, position. It's also sort of a conservative position if you're a true libertarian. Um, I think I wish, uh, I don't wish Sean was here, but I wish Sean could, we had a quote or something to play from Sean about well, that. We, do have, we actually do have a, a quote from Sean. He does support the uh, people's uh, natural ability to travel. Oh, so I mean, he's like, yeah, we open up the borders. It's it's a person's, a human's natural right to travel. So Sean is a perfect example, and we do have that quote from him. Yeah, but uh, and so thank you, uh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, the the other, uh, but the thing is, like, we're we're not asking you to open up the the, the borders to everyone. We're asking you to open up the borders to refugee children who are refugees of a war caused by our policy. And this is what we would expect of any other nation. This is like right now in Syria, you know, we're, we're, we expect Jordan and Turkey and other countries around there to open up their border to Syrian refugees. Uh, because there's, and th those, they didn't even start that war, right? But these drug wars in South America um, are a result of our domestic drug policy. This is a war that we should own and that means owning the the waves of refugee uh, immigrant you know unaccompanied minors who are fleeing to escape that whatever this guy says you know you send them back and it's so sad oh it, you send them back to a sad situation that you created you're one of the men who writes our laws and writes our drug policy do something about it if you're going to send the kids back then fix the policy that they're running from if you're not going to send them back then maybe you don't have to work as fast to fix the policy i think you should for other reasons but you get my point and then um, uh, my final point, uh, just to kind of uh, to uh, uh, wrap it all up, um, is uh, uh, to kind of build on something Stephen said. Like these kids do perform better in school, and at least their f first generation immigrants perform better in the workplace. And why is that shocking? At least in, in this particular scenario. So you're telling me that these kids, you know, people who are under the age of 18, who have hiked thousands of miles across multiple, you know, countries just to get here and earn the right to live here, you know, by virtue of being here, like, are we surprised that they work hard and succeed, uh, you know, as opposed to people who were born here and enjoy all the wonderful things that America has to offer, you know, by no effort of their own? I, uh, come on, it's common sense. 